Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another lesson in Unit 7, ArrayList. And this lesson is going to be focusing on traversing ArrayList. So we're going to see how we can use for loops and enhanced for loops to display, add, modify, do really anything we want to do um, with an ArrayList. Um, so getting right into it, um, let's talk about the basics of traversing an ArrayList. Um, just to display contents. So let's first say you have a list of fruits in ArrayList. So here's creating the list of fruits, apples, grapes, kiwis. Perfect. There's three ways we can print off the contents of the ArrayList. Um, the first way is what we've seen so far, um, just using the uh, reference for the ArrayList fruits and putting that in a print line statement. This will print off apple, grapes, kiwi, um, kind of how we would keep track of it on a piece of paper with square brackets, commas between them. That's what it looks like. And what it's doing is calling on the array list two string method. So the two string method will print off the contents in a nice format. Okay? We've made two string methods before. This is what it's there for. And an array list has a built in one that we can use. So it is concise and simple. One line of code looks beautiful. You know what it's going to do. Um, but you're limited in how it formats the contents. It looks like that, what it is on your screen. If you wanted to do anything else with the format, you're kind of limited if you try to call the two string option. So there's other ways we can um, display an array list. And another way is with a traversal. So a traversal uses um, a for loop or sometimes another loop, but we use a for loop in an array list to display the contents where we have an index. The index that's in our header is our um, uh, index that controls where we are in the list, where we are in our current element. So this for loop starts off i equals zero, um, i less than fruits.size. So we go all the way up through the end of the list, i plus plus. And now here we're using the fruits.get method. So we're using a method now to get the element at index i. Okay. So the output, so I'm doing print line and I'm just printing off um, the contents on each individual line. So I have apples, grapes, kiwi as my output. Okay. The benefit is you have complete control over the formatting. If you wanted to print them on separate lines, same lines, put anything between them, put any sort of extra wording in there, um, you have complete control over how you want to format that output. Um, but the drawback for this specific type is you have to watch out for the boundary issues. Okay. Now, when you're just displaying in an array list, the boundary is pretty straightforward. Um, but when you're using that for loop in general, you have to be careful of those um, of those index out of bounds errors in your for loop header. Okay. So you do have to watch that. That could be considered a drawback, um, but um, the formatting is a big is a big benefit. The last way you can print off the contents is using an enhanced for loop or a for each loop as we call it. So that is using um, a variable. In this case, we're going to call it variable f. It's a string because all of the contents of the array list fruits are strings. And then f represents the element that is at the current um, at the current index. Okay. So here, this would also print off apple scrapes kiwis on a separate line. And it does enhance code readability. That's a big benefit um, because you're not using any indexes and you're not using any methods. Okay. It is strictly the um, um, what that element is. The element is f. You don't have to use any sort of indices to get it. Um, the formatting options are a little bit more restricted because you're not using an indice. Again, not necessarily in this example are you limited, but in future examples, you are kind of limited in what you can do in an enhanced for loop because you are not using indices um, to control the loop. So that's something to keep in mind as we kind of go through more and more algorithms using an array list. Okay. So those are the three ways we can traverse an array list. And in these examples, we just traverse them to display the contents. Okay. Now let's talk about traversing them um, to add items. 
Okay, so here um, I'm going to use this example with a standard um, for loop to add items to an array list. So I have an array list called squares. It's going to contain integer values. And the comment there says I want to add all the perfect squares from 1 to 10. So that means I want to add 1, 4, 9, 6, etc., all the way up to 100. Because this is, of course, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, etc., etc., all the way up to 10 squared. Okay. And instead of writing 10 separate lines of code, the squares.add1, squares.add4. I could do that, um, but that would take 10, 10 lines of code to add these items to my array list. I can use a loop instead because there's a predictable pattern, starting point, ending point, and I can use that pattern to add the perfect squares. So I'll start by using my standard for loop header where i is um, equal to 1, and um, it goes up to and including 10. And I just do squares.add i times i. So in this case, i isn't my index. i represents um, a, an element that I'm going to add to my array list. Okay? So I'm adding i times i. Because i times i is a single parameter. And remember, when I have a single parameter, I am adding that to the end of my array list. So by the end of this loop, I'll have all the perfect squares added to the array list. I want you to note that an enhanced for loop will not work to add items to an array list. Okay? Why is that? Well, when we add items, our array list is changing. Right? Our, if we add items, our array list is growing. And when I use a for each loop, um, in squares, let's say, let's say I were to try to add an item here. Um, one, let's say, what would I add, right? Squares.add, okay. If I wanted to add a value, okay, I could probably introduce another variable that controls, you know, um, kind of like the for loop header, um, a variable that controls what squares are added. Um, but at that same time, Remember, the for each loop is limited because you are adding, um, you are going through each element that already exists, okay? And no elements exist when you start your for each loop. So at first, you might think, oh, I could probably use a for each loop. But when you think about it, you are working with elements that exist already in there. And when you're adding to it, um, the elements are are non-existent starting. So that's one of the reasons it doesn't work. The other reason is a for each loop actually won't work if you're changing the size of an array list. Okay, And that's why when we get into the next part, removing items, an array a for each loop will also not be able to remove items. Okay, But we'll get to that. Let's talk about a regular for loop. Okay, And what are the contents of an array list when we run each segment of code here. So I'm going to use a for loop and then an enhanced for loop. So my array list of squares contains these values. Okay, So this is what I just did above when I added values to my array list. This is what it contains. The code below should remove all elements in the array list squares. Why does it not work? Okay. So I start off at i equals 0. So now i is going to represent the index. I go all the way up to squares.size, and i increases each time. So starting my for loop, i is 0. So I'm going to remove 0. Okay. So I remove the first element, index 0. Everything gets shifted over. Now these become my new indices. right? And then i becomes 1, and I go to remove 1, meaning I remove index 1. But that's my new index 1. Okay. Then everything gets shifted over. So now I have this as my array list. Okay, I'm going to just da, ba, ba, at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. i increases to 2. And then I remove index 2. 
Okay. So if you notice, as I'm going through and I'm trying to remove all the elements, it's not working. I'm skipping numbers. Okay. And that is because as I increases, my array list is also shifting over to the left because I'm removing items. Okay. And when that shift happens, the shift happens at this method call. So remove I, removed it, and the shift happens all in one go and then my eye increases, and I end up missing indices. So after the code is run, that's what my list contains. Okay. I didn't remove all the elements. Okay. It doesn't work as intended because of that shift while the loop is, is running. Okay. So at first glance, you might think, yeah, this is gonna remove every element, okay. but it does not. Okay. The logic doesn't work. Um, the syntax is fine. The syntax works great, but the logic behind it doesn't work. Okay. So it's going to be the same thing with this segment of code, too. Okay. This is a for each loop. Um, it wants to remove all the elements, but it does not work. Okay. At first glance, the syntax looks great, right? For every int num in the squares, remove num, okay? because all of the numbers are there. There's current elements. The syntax looks good. Um, it is in fact not good, okay? And I'll explain um, in a moment why, okay? Actually, let's just explain it now. The code above or, you know, over here will compile, um, but you'll get a concurrent modification exception when you actually go to run the code. And what that means is you're trying to change the size of an array in of enhanced for loop. An enhanced for loop does not like when you try to change the size of an array list. Okay? You're trying to change the size of squares while you're removing elements and it is it does not like that at all. So anytime you're trying to change an array list size, you can't use an enhanced for loop. Okay? Um, you won't be able to. <laughs> and logically Logically as well, you run into the same error as you would with the regular for loop, okay? You start at the beginning, okay, let's say you removed this element, everything got shifted over, you go up by one, then you remove this element, okay? You kind of run into the same logic issue. If you'll notice here, I have a remove num too. Now there is a method called remove that removes the first occurrence of a specific, um, of a specific object. Here, um, it would get confused because it's accepting an int um, primitive, and when it accepts an int primitive, um, it reads that as an index and not an object. So you would get an issue. Um, it doesn't automatically auto box here. But technically, there is a, a remove option where you remove the first instance of an object in your array list. It's not on the AP exam, and we're not going to use it in this class but it does exist. So this, the whole thing about this is just wrong. So we do not use enhanced for loops um, when we're changing the size of an array list. So if you do want to remove items, you need to be, just be a little bit smarter about it. Um, remember that the remove method scoots every item that comes after the removed back a spot. And there's a few ways logically you could um, work around that, right? If you iterate forward, you end up missing some items. Um, so one of the first ways you might think of is instead of iterating forward, you can iterate back, backwards. And that's, <coughs> excuse me, that's the benefit of a regular for loop is because you can change um, whether you go backwards or forwards through the array list. <coughs> Gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm talking too much and then it just all gets messed up. Okay. So here's what that code would look like. You start at your last index, which would be squares.size minus one. And you go down to when i equals zero. <coughs> As you're removing i, you remove that last index, 
And then if you remove the last index, everything that came before it doesn't shift over at all. So you won't run into that, that issue of um, your array list, even though it is changing size, changing size, you will not skip over any elements. Another way, another logical way some students think of too is you can still move forward with your traversal, but then you just offset the I, um, which is kind of a weird roundabout way to do it, but it also works, um, is just manipulating your I a little bit more inside of your for loop so that it doesn't skip any elements. Okay. And then the last couple points I want to make here before the end of the lesson if you're looking for a quick way to print the entire list, maybe just to check the contents um, or just to you know display what's in there, use the two-string method. It's very efficient, one line of code, bam. If you need full control over formatting and like you want to add special separators like tabs, new lines, um, or certain words that go along with your array list, a regular for loop is the way to go. Um, if you enjoy readability in your code and your formatting needs are pretty straightforward, the enhanced for loop is also an easy to read, um, easy to read option too. Okay, so just know when you're writing, when we get into the next lesson of writing algorithms um, and traversing through array lists, whether we are printing off the contents or we're doing something with the contents of an array list, you want to be careful of what you're using. The two string is just for displaying. Okay, Usually we use a regular for loop in our algorithms just because we do have total control using those indices. Um, but the enhanced for loop sometimes might work for algorithms, but we usually skip it for those reasons we talked about. Um, we can't change the size of an array list in an enhanced for loop. It, you'll get an error. So that's why these in this next lesson, you'll see us traversing these array lists using the for loop a lot. Okay, thanks for sticking with me through this lesson. That brings us to the end of traversing array lists, and I will see you in the next lesson. Thanks, guys.